Where exactly were you speaking, please? <clears throat> uh, Winchester, which is in the county of Hampshire, and Hampshire is uh, is part of the South East constituency for the European Union elections, which I'm standing in. So I thought, as it's part of my constituency, uh, I will go down and try and explain to these people who do not live nearby to a Muslim community uh, something about Islam to them. You are actually speaking to a crowd about as standing as a candidate in an election in, in a riding in which you were one of the candidates. Uh, how many people would you say were listening to you? Well, in the beginning, uh, you know, let's face it, none of this, uh, none of this lasted for very long, I'm afraid. We had, uh, I started off by saying to them that uh, people of Winchester, I want to talk to you specifically about Islam and I want to uh, read something to you. And then I started reading it. We were immediately interrupted by this, uh, by this woman who then immediately got on her phone and we uh, rightly assumed that she had phoned the police. And within about three minutes, the police had arrived and uh, taken my megaphone away from me and taken my, uh, my transcript of, the, of Churchill's words and said that I could no longer do that because my words were causing offense and distress uh, to, uh, to people who, uh, who were listening. Did your audience or the police know at the time that you were quoting Churchill? Or did they know after? At what point did did they know it was Churchill you were quoting? Did you start out by saying that this is Winston Churchill, or were you saving that for the end of the quote? Well, no, I was never. I was never actually going to mention it at all. If I hadn't been arrested, I would have mentioned it was Winston Churchill. Having been arrested, I thought there's absolutely no point uh, informing the police about this because they will then perhaps be uh, slightly less forward in in taking action. And I thought that if it really has come to the point that you can be arrested for, for saying these words, then don't tell them who originally said it and, uh, and let them prosecute you, arrest you, prosecute you. And, and just to show the rest of the world how, how utterly sunk this poor old country of Britain is today. Interesting. I agree with that. Do, do you, did, among the people that were there when you started, did you have any supporters that were listening? We, uh, we did. We had... Uh, we had you know, there were, we got passers by initially and a, a small crowd formed, but this was literally all over within three minutes. And, but, but by the time it ended, we had, uh, we had people shouting from the, from the crowd, uh, what are you arresting him for? There's nothing wrong with what he's saying, which was probably about 80% of the, uh, of the people with that view. And the 20%, of course, were shouting things like, uh, you're, a, you're a bunch of Nazis and you know, the usual stuff that the that the either the, the the hard left or the totally uninformed about Islam come out with. How dreadful are the curses which Islam lays on its voters? Besides the fanatical frenzy, which is as dangerous in a man as hydrophobia in a dog, there is this fearful, fatalistic apathy. The effects are apparent in many countries. Improvident habits, slovenly systems of agriculture, sluggish methods of commerce and insecurity of property exist wherever the followers of the Prophet Muhammad rule or live. A degraded sensualism deprives this life of its grace and refinement and the next of its dignity and sanctity. The fact that in Islamic law every woman must belong to some man as his absolute property, either as a wealth a wife, a child, or a concubine must delay the final extinction of slavery until the faith of Islam has ceased to be a great power amongst men. Individual Muslims may show splendid qualities, but the influence of the Islamic religion paralyzes the social development of those who follow it. No stronger retrograde force exists in this world than far from it being moribund. Islamism is a militant and proselytizing faith. It is already spread throughout Central Africa, raising fearless warriors at every step. And were it not that Christianity is sheltered in the strong arms of science, the science against which Islam has vainly struggled, the civilization of modern Europe might fall, as fell the civilization of ancient Rome. What, what is the charge that you believe you'll be that's going to be leveled at you? Well, in the beginning, they said <clears throat> they said to me that because my words were causing uh, uh, concern and distress, 
uh, I, I should immediately cease. When I said that I, uh, I wasn't going to do that, they said, if you don't cease, we will arrest you under something called a breach of the Section 27 dispersal notice. And I said, well, that's fine, but uh, I, am, uh, I am standing for an election uh, in this constituency. I have a right to free speech. I will continue speaking. I picked up the megaphone again. I think I got about two words out, and, and that was it. I was uh, uh, manhandled down, down the steps and, and then searched and chucked in the back of their police van. When we got to the police station, uh, I wasn't fingerprinted. My DNA wasn't taken because a Section 27 is not necessarily a criminal offence. Uh, they they so so they said we're not uh, you know we're not going to fingerprint and DNA you. They put me into a cell and they kept me there I think for about five hours, and then a policeman came in and said uh, we are dropping the uh, original uh, uh, thing which was this uh, Section 27 breach. We are rearresting you in the police station now uh, under uh, the uh, incitement of racial hatred. Uh, and they specifically they are they, they, they are getting me with uh, uh, racially aggravated crime under section four of the public order act which i've had a look at and it's rather nasty it says uh, it says that you can go to jail for two years under that one major media in the uk has there been any interest in this uh, any attempts to any requests for interviews by bbc or even the daily mail or anything Nope, there has been absolutely nothing. I got a phone call earlier from the Southampton Echo, which which also covers the Winchester area, and I, well, I didn't get a phone call. I got a message saying, "Can I phone the journalist though?" And I I, I was expecting uh, an antagonistic bloke, and that's exactly what I got. He was not horrified about the idea you can be arrested for quoting Churchill in Britain today. He wanted to know why I, why I did it, what I thought I would achieve, uh, did I, was I aware that by doing that I would be causing offence and distress, and all the, all the buzzwords they come out with. So that's the only uh, British media outlet that has come anywhere near me, and it was immediately antagonistic. Apart from that, there has been nothing. Would you say that the attitude of the police was that we're dealing with you both in the police station and the initial arrest. Did you get any sense of their view of this? Well, the two, uh, the two policemen that initially arrested me were, were, were very young. Uh, they didn't really have, have, have the faintest idea what was going on. It was only when I got to the police station that uh, that, that was then dropped and, a, and a, a, a senior policeman then brought in the charges of uh, racially aggravated crime. Uh, but despite that, they were... I can understand their following orders. The actual policemen themselves were very polite, very civilized. Uh, one of them even talked to me for, for half an hour after the interview, because I, I had a taped interview in the interview room, and I was supposed to go back to the cell, and he said, look, we're going to arrange bail for you. You don't need to go back to the cell. We can sit in here and have a cup of coffee and a, and a, and a, and a sandwich and, uh, and have a chat off the record. And off the record, he, uh, he said to me that we are essentially at war in this country. But of course, I'm not <clears throat> in my official capacity allowed to say anything about that. What would you like to see happen? Like, I mean, what do you expect to happen next? You're going to there's going to be a trial then. Like you've been formally charged, and or at least you're there's, you're going to be you formally charged. And do you know anything about when there might be a trial? Well, the uh, I've been bailed for three weeks. I'm I'm due to go back to uh, the police station on May the twenty fourth, and. I am assuming that in the interim period, uh, what the what the uh, investigating officer said to me at the time was, uh, he will forward everything, including the uh, obviously you know, because they they don't have video of me doing it, they are they are just responding to a to a report from the crowd. They heard a few words that I said, but what they have said, uh, they have taken a copy of the Churchill transcript, uh, and they are sending that on to the Crown Prosecution Service with the recommendation that uh, that I be prosecuted under this uh, racially aggravated section 4. So be somewhere between now and May the 24th, if the Crown Prosecution Service says, yes, we're going to go ahead and prosecute him, then I'm assuming that when I go back to the police station on May the 24th, I will be, uh, I will be arrested and, and held. So for the benefit of people that don't live in the UK, what level and of court and meaning of court is it's the court system there's a little different than it is either in Canada or the states it, this would be in front of 
a, a magistrate or a, a judge or it's a criminal proceeding, right? It's a criminal proceeding, but uh, but criminal proceedings can be dealt with in magistrates' courts. But I would imagine, because uh, because clearly, if they if they are intending to prosecute, then we're obviously going to mount a proper defence. So it would probably go to a crown court hearing with a judge, which is similar to uh, to you know I'm sure you heard about the whole Tim Burton uh, Takia trial recently. Very much so. And and uh, of course Tim got off on that one and the crown prosecution service must have been aware that he was probably going to get off but they are you know the crown prosecution service was taken over by the cultural marxists left a long time ago 20 20 years ago now they will prosecute anything they possibly can even if they know they're going to lose it simply because they think that by prosecuting they will deter anybody else from doing it even if they win in court no, they still don't want to have to go through that <clears throat> pretty unpleasant uh, situation especially when the power they have on their side is the fact that if you are found guilty, uh, you know, the sentence is two years. Is there anything that people both inside or outside the UK what would to, could do to help you? What Are you fundraising or do you, you just want to raise awareness of this or what is it you'd like to see people do? Well, I think... Uh, I I think at the moment it's just to raise awareness because because I know that you know I always knew before this happened that the probability of uh, my being arrested was very high and the probability of the English British media taking any interest in it was very low and I thought that this is this is where we need and uh, thank god they exist uh, you know a, a country uh, America Canada Australia New Zealand where you can actually still say these things and get away with it and my initial thought was, if we can get this into, uh, I mean, for example, I think I'm, I'll be with Michael Corran next week, and and uh, Eric Stackelbeck is trying to organise something for uh, for Fox News and Glenn Beck. So, it, if we can make it big enough in America that the media over here are simply forced into having to report it, then then that would that would basically satisfy every single reason for why I did this in the first place.